Yeah, so I started writing uh, the summer after freshman year because I wanted to be a better writer. And so um, I felt like it would be a good habit of mine to try to write something like each week. And so I did that for, I think about a year, where I'd write something or I blog post each week. I don't think it, was, it wasn't a ton of work. And, but I would have this habit um, that stayed throughout college where I would spend an hour each morning, my first hour, uh, maybe after working out with my roommate, writing. So that was always like kind of a sacred time for me. Every morning, I think it's like nine to 10. And I switched semester by semester. And so it was more of a product of a habit than an intentional. So I said, I want to become a better writer. I'm going to set up this habit where I'm writing each morning for an hour. And then the product of that habit was like this different content that would come out. Uh, and so it was really easy for uh, yeah, for my roommate and I, we decided like a tarot, <laughs> hilariously, we said, okay, let's try to write a book, you know, and the book is so, I mean, it's tons of fun, in, in retrospect, probably incredibly mediocre, um, but in that kind of place, but, uh, you know, but it was, but it came out of that habit of wanting to become a better writer. So that was the, um, that was the goal. That was the goal when I started in kind of right around freshman to sophomore year. And so my next question was, tips but it sounds like making a habit of it is the the tip that trumps all tips is like if you want to become a writer write more and how do you write more you make a habit of it yeah I, i'm like super i mean but like honestly it you you would definitely be like preaching the choir that my belief is really structured around habits how do you create habits that enable you to be uh enable you to be successful and so a lot of you know, at the Franklin, Franklin Fellowship, the homeless stuff we did was around like, how do you help people develop good habits? Uh, and so it, that's my belief, right? So maybe I'm wrong. I'm sure there's people who would disagree with me, but I'm all about the habits when it comes to kind of executing on something, especially personal growth. Well, you're definitely preaching to the choir on, on, oh, really? that, yeah. on that one. Um, yeah. So we, we are on the same wavelength here. Like <laughs> if it's not a habit in my day, it's not happening. <laughs> Because I like that because they're like, hey, Chris, you want to get coffee? You're like, okay, so we can get coffee once a month or not at all, you know? Right. <laughs> yeah, you pick. Here's your options. <laughs> You're talking to the guy who has had the same breakfast all four years of college. <laughs> what is the breakfast? It's a yogurt bowl with, awesome. with, yeah, I mean, I can, whatever, but it makes me happy and it sets my day up and it's a habit. Um but there's obviously more uh, substantive habits. So um, while we're on this, well, actually, let's circle back to the habits because I don't want to lose the thread of writing because I am also mm. thinking of building a writing habit. I love doing these podcasts. And even like I had a habit or whatever of putting them out every Sunday and then mm. I missed Easter Sunday. And ever since then, I've been giving myself slack. Oh, I'll just do it every other Sunday, you know? Mm -hmm. So like your idea of having a habit, um, a weekly habit really resonates with me. Um, so I'm thinking this summer, like, wouldn't it be cool to kind of chronicle my, my growth and of learning like how to surf and now maybe mm. learning Spanish? Um, so... I guess, are there any other recommendations on kind of putting yourself out there online in, in a blogs mm. type, type setting, like topics to write about, doesn't matter, just write about anything. Um, do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, it's good. It depends a little bit on your goal. And by the way, one other person who you could talk to if, if you're looking for more, you know, ancient people. He's class of 2019. Oh my god. So goodness. maybe you overlapped with it. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Keep I don't going. know if you know him actually. Do you know Michael Burvell? Um, he's no, we haven't crossed paths. No. Okay. He's you would love him. He's incredible. He's what he was one of the like the big leaders of the Franco Fellowship. Um, went on to you know works at Microsoft, he's gonna go to HBS in a couple of years. He's incredible. Um, so he's one of my someone I admire, uh, he's recently written a book, but he, he wrote a, I think, so I think to that, that question, I, there's actually to be two, 
two layers there. So one is like, why are you writing? Are you writing because you want to just develop? And then it doesn't really matter the, the you know, the external awareness of it. Uh, and uh, that, that new external awareness isn't motivating for you. Certainly for me, it is motivating. So for me, I would think about how do I, uh, and the second question is if, if that is important to you, then I think you want to choose something that's at least somewhat specific and somewhat consistent. So, and Michael Burvell, class of 2019, he has done a great job. He's created something called the billion dollar startups ideas, which is just a, a every day, he just writes this post that's about like, here's a billion dollar startup idea. And um, some of them are good. Some of them are not good. And, uh, but he's just compiled like 500 of these. And I think that uh, it's, you know, I don't know how big his audience is, but like, I am stoked every time I see one of his emails and he, he doesn't even frame it as himself. He frames his billion dollar startup ideas. And then every time it's written by like at the bottom, it's like written by Michael Burbell. And so I think um, one way to do this is think about people who have done a good job with this and try to emulate them and maybe in like a slightly different, slightly different area. So I think he's in a good job. I think um, uh, Naz actually from uh, uh, Naz Daily. I don't know if you've crossed paths with him. Oh Not the God. rapper, Nas. No, sadly. Um, this guy, I mean, he is. <laughs> How do you spell like, his last gotta, name? Let me just send it to him. He's huge now. He's huge, huge, huge. Um, he's like 9 million followers, I think, on Facebook. He's a Harvard grad. I think class of, he's like probably me to you as, me to him as you to me. Sure. Like he's like four or five years older than me. Uh, uh, he, he quit his job at uh, Stripe. Was it Venmo? And then he decided to create a 60 second video every day for a thousand days. And he just traveled the world and he, and he got, became huge. And now he's in Singapore and he's actually just like one of the biggest influencers on the internet right now. And um, he's a Harvard grad, he's just really nice Palestinian uh, dude. And uh, yeah, check him out. I think he's a, he'd be really inspiring to kind of learn from. And um, I don't know him super well, but I'm always happy to send him a message as well. Uh, so yeah, no, I'll, but um, I think I think about like how do you get like reference points of people who have done good job? Yeah, yeah, I think there is something to like I want to like get better at the the craft of writing and like communicating, putting getting ideas out of my head. And I think part of it is I like to if when I'm writing, I get those ideas and they out of my head, and then they kind of that's how I think about them mm. best. So I think that would also be kind of like the dual um, motivation behind writing. Um, yeah. And if mm. you guys didn't catch it, yes, Stephen did write a book as an undergrad, which is ridiculous. Um, and it sounds like it sounds like it got done because of that. Our writing habit every day is that how you went about getting it done, or was it like more dedicated uh, time to that? That, that one was, um, this is another one was like funny choice sets. My, um, my, my bet called my best friend. He's the one that we still talk like every day. Uh, this guy, Greg is my senior year roommate. We were, he's also one of the people who started Franklin fellowship. So we were hanging out as junior fall and we had winter, we had no winter break plans. No one had invited us to do anything with them. Like, you know, that seems to be the, our experience every break. In there. Uh, even, <laughs> yeah, you're like, you're like, uh, and so we were just brainstorming ideas and uh, we have one, we were choosing between taking a motorcycle and then trying to motorcycle across Africa, which I think neither of us knew anything about in retrospect, doesn't even make sense as a concept like that. Right. Even. Uh, and then we were thinking we could write, try to write this book. And so we thought, oh, why don't we try to write it? And so what we did is that we spent three, he said three weeks of the winter break, two weeks in his hometown of Reno, Nevada, not, not the most exciting place. Great place one, to write a book. <laughs> exactly. One place back in, um, back at Harvard. And the goal was we would write 2000 words a day for, uh, for that was three weeks. And that ended us up with across the two of us. I think it was something like 60,000 words or something in that range. And, um, those words were not good words. They're very bad words. Um, but uh, but I think that was a good base. And then essentially, then from there, the habit, my habit kicked in for, for editing and adding from there. But we, we spent a ton of time. So again, this book is not like 
no one's gonna like write home about like how well beautifully like thought through and edited in the comments you should check out the reviews like some are very positive some are like dude this like this running joke that we think is funny is people are like this is so stupid so, so, so. <laughs> but uh no those are cool and so we um yeah so i think it was great it's a lot of fun and so 